Hey everybody, my name's Jeremy, and today we're going to be talking all about clustering inside of Nats. Now, Nats has a really, really awesome scalability story. You might have heard me talk about that in another episode, but today we're going to be talking all about how to bring that scalability to life via Nats clusters. And so today I'm going to put together a little bit of an illustration using Excaladraw. So, so far, in our episodes, we've been talking about NAT servers. We've been firing up a NAT server and we've had NAT servers connect to these various NATS clients. But we've really just explored this client server architecture and nothing beyond that. Today we're gonna dive into how we can actually expand this architecture, not only into uh, single clusters, but into clusters of clusters called super clusters. So just a little review, NATS is known as location independent, meaning we can have a client connect to the NATS server and start speaking with other clients connected to that server without knowing the address of the particular client they're talking to. We just use subjects. And this is a really, really powerful construct because it allows us to have clients that are distributed all over the globe, not really knowing what their actual addresses are or how to get to them via DNS. They just connect to the NAT server and the NAT server is the one that mediates all those messages. But what if you need more scalability? What if you need more redundancy? Well, that's where clustering comes in. And so you can imagine going for, uh, beyond a single node cluster and into a multi-node cluster. In this case, we have three. Um, and as you could see in this illustration, let me pull this over a little bit more. As you can see in this illustration, we have two clients connected to this node and we have one client connected to this node and uh, they can still talk to each other because NATS connects all of these servers together to essentially orchestrate where the messages flow. And this is really, really powerful guys. Um, it's gonna be really fun to set up today. Uh, what we'll do in the next episode is we'll actually start exploring what it looks like to connect these clusters into a super cluster. And you, as you could see, there's clients that are connected all over, but you can imagine that these clusters can live in different locations and regions and clouds and things like that. Um, we have a cluster in US East over here, a cluster in Europe and a cluster in East Asia. And so this can be really, really powerful. You could live out that power fantasy of owning and operating your own super cluster. And it's pretty fun to do in Nats. So let's get started with creating our very first cluster. The first thing we need to do is we need to be able to kind of view some stats and information about the cluster that we create. And the way that we're gonna do that is using the system events that are built into these NAT servers. In order to do that, we actually need to create an account with higher privileges. And so we're going to write a server configuration that adds some, uh, some users to essentially access this information. And so in the last episode, we created a server configuration. We're gonna do another one today, but this time we're gonna be putting in accounts. So I'm going to fire up Vim and I'm going to say server.conf. We're going to have to set up a user on a special account called dollar sign sys. And this account already has extended admin privileges so you can get all of the metrics that you need to collect for your server and the clusters it belongs to. So let's do that. We're going to modify the accounts directive. And inside this accounts directive, we're going to specify dollar sign sys, which is an account that already exists, but we're going to add uh, to the users portion of this sys account. We're going to add a new account and we'll use the username and password flow. There's plenty of other different authorization and authentication flows that you can use. Um, this one isn't the most secure because the username and password is in plain text on your config file. But for this demo, we're going to go for the simplest approach. So the user is going to be called admin and the password is going to be password. And that's it. That's really all that we need to be able to connect to this server and get all the metrics that uh, we'll need to monitor this stuff. Um, so we can go ahead and close this out. And I'm gonna fire up a NAT server with NAT's server and use our configuration file server.conf. And now we have a NAT server fired up. Next up, we want to get information about this server with a NAT CLI, but we need to use um, that user that we just created. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a CLI context. We can say Nats context list to list out our context. I have the default one selected right now, but we're gonna create a brand new one with this admin. So we can say Nats uh, context save, and we can add in uh, the name of our context. Let's call this a uh, cluster sys. And that created a context for us. We can then say Nats context edit cluster sys, and this will give us all of the information about this particular um, 
this particular context. And so we have the URL that we're connecting to, a description. I'm going to say the description is um, used to connect to our demo cluster. And then the user is going to be admin. And the password is going to be password, like we mentioned. Now we'll revisit this when we go into um, the cluster URLs. But for now, we can just close this out and we can start using it by saying nat context select cluster sys. Now we have that uh, sys cluster selected. We should be able to connect to our server by running nat's server ping. And that should ping our server, and it looks like we got one reply back. That's the server name. Um, now, this server name is really long. If we wanted to change it and make it a little bit shorter, we could say name equals uh, North America 1 as an example. Um, and then that should allow us to see a much smaller name. But also, I could say Nat's server list, and it will give us a list of the actual server. Uh, its IP address, version, um, whether it's using Jetstream, its number of connections. And this is kind of the view that we're going to use um, to monitor our cluster. So I'm going to go into a new tab and I'm going to say NATS server list. Um, and we're going to actually put this in a watch command. And we're going to sort by name just so we don't get all of those things out of order every time we run the, the watch command. And so Right now, we have one server named North America 1. Great. So now we need to figure out how to run multiple servers. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Docker Compose to uh, create all three of our servers and connect them together for clusters. Now, you don't have to use Docker Compose. You could use Kubernetes. You could run these servers together. But Docker Compose is going to be an easy way for us to kind of fire up those servers and tear them down. So let's go do that. I'm going to create a new uh, Docker Compose file. And in this Docker Compose file, we will have uh, services. Um, we'll name this one NA1 for North America 1. We will use um, the default NATS image from uh, Docker Hub. And for our command, we want to pass in uh, a configuration file, the one that we just created. Um, let's put it on Etsy myserver.conf. And we'll give this a name of NA1. And we'll run this on port uh, 4222, our default. Um, now, in order for us to get this server.conf, we need to mount it as a volume uh, via Docker. So we will do that with the volumes command. We'll run server.conf and we will map it to etsy, etsy slash myserver.conf. And that's pretty much all that we need. Now, in order to access this uh, server, we also need to map uh, the actual port um, 4222 to our host port 4222 so we can actually access it via the CLI. So let's actually try this out. I'm going to say docker compose up. And it looks like we're running our server, which is great. Let's go over back to our watch. And you can see that the server is absolutely running um, via Docker Compose, and we can you know, get a connection to it, which is great. So let's move on to actually connecting all of these clusters together using the same configuration file that we just opened. And we'll put in a North America 2 and a North America 3 server. We'll cluster them together, and then we'll start running some tests to publish and subscribe to these servers. So let's do that. We'll tear down uh, Docker, and what we're going to do is first we're going to edit our server.conf that we just created. We have accounts set up, but now we need to set up information about the cluster. And we could do that by using the cluster directive. And inside this cluster directive, we give this cluster a name. In this case, we're going to just say NA for North America. We give this cluster a connection port, which is 6222. You can assign it to whatever port you want, as long as nothing else is stomping on it. And then we're going to give it some routes. And this is kind of like your list of seed servers to connect to for the cluster. And in this case, I'm going to say NATS, um, NA, whatever I named that, NA1 as our seed server. And we're going to go 6222 for our cluster connection port. This should be all that we need for all the other clusters connect because the way that clustering works in NAT is that we use a gossip protocol. So once um, one of these servers connects to uh, the seed server, it will gossip about all of its neighbors and everything will get connected to each other in a cluster automatically. So 
This should be all that we need in order to create a cluster. Um, let's actually fire up some more services. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. We're going to name this North America 2. We'll name it North America 2. We'll run it on port uh, 4223. And we will rename these. And that's all that we need to run North America 2. And we'll just do the same thing with North America 3. We'll say this is called North America 3 using the same server configuration and we'll run it on 42.24. And we should be able to run this via Docker Compose, DC up. And if we did everything right, we should be able to go over to this watch command and see that we have three servers on the North America cluster um, that are all clustered together. We get all this information about how many nodes are in each cluster, et cetera, et cetera, how many subscriptions that we have. These subscriptions are around system events um, and what connection we have. And so we have one connection on the North America one server, and that just happens to be, well, this watch command. Um, because this is a connection that's getting uh, access to information on the server. Now, the last thing that we have to do is we have to tell our NATS context to be able to connect to all of these servers. Um, and so the way that we do that is we go and edit our context. And if you're using like a Go uh, client or Python client or, or something in another language, this would be your connection string. And so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say NATS context edit. Uh, cluster sys and we're going to open back up our cluster sys configuration and instead of just having 4222 we're going to add our other servers as well and what this will do is nats will be smart about randomly selecting one of these in order to connect to at least one of the servers in the cluster and if it doesn't detect that a server is online it will move on to another one and so what we can do here is we can rerun our cluster, DC up, and then I'll rerun the watch command. And you can see that it's connecting to the second server now. And eventually it will kind of hop around because I'm rerunning this command over and over and over again. So you can kind of see the connections moving around from server to server. And this is going to allow us to evenly distribute the connections when we, when we do so. Let's actually try that out. So I'm going to say nats bench. I'm going to create 10 subscribers to this hello subject so we can actually create some simulation around it. And then I'm going to actually publish to this hello subject as well. So Nats pub he hello, and I'm going to just kind of indefinitely every 10 milliseconds publish to this subject. And as you can see, if we go over here, you can see that those 10 subjects are actually spread out connection wise around this. Uh, one of the really cool things is I can kill one of these servers. Let's do that right now. I can kill one of these servers by saying uh, docker compose kill NA2 and it will automatically move those connections over to, to either NA1 or NA3 and everything still works which is really really awesome and so that's a basic overview of how you can cluster things together in NATS like I said, next episode, we're going to dive into how we do super clustering and how we enable Jetstream on these different servers and things to consider. But I hope you guys liked this episode. It was a bit of a long one, I know, but it's a super powerful construct. And this is just a little drop in the bucket for all the things that you could do with clustering in NATS. So I hope you like this. Stay tuned for next week. We'll go over super clustering and NATS Jetstream. Talk to you soon.